Jerry Miller. Jerry Miller. All right, what's going on, my people? Welcome to the SN95 Power Channel. We got a lot going on today. I have the front bumper off the car. I fitted the other um, sprawl four inch cooling fan for my um, trans cooler. We have um, car jacked in the air, have the oil drained, and today we're going to get started on a uh, oil pan gasket seal. Now for um, gaskets, I'm a fail pro kind of guy, and I always use the blue reusable style fail pro gaskets. Now, these are a little bit more expensive, but in the long run, I believe that they're worth it. Now, some people have had success getting these gaskets. I have this gasket on here already. And let me think, tell you about the folly um, of what I did, or what I think I did, or the issue is. A couple of things. When I installed this on the car right now, I did not have the, the pan rails on the car. So what the pan rails do is they help keep um, this gasket level and they help uh, put well, I shouldn't say level. This helps put even pressure. Hey, Bryson, come say hi to America. Hi. It's me, Bryson. Okay, so um, we, we're doing an oil pan gasket today, Bryson. Yeah. So I got the car in the air. We got to get under the car and take this old thing off, and we're going to put a new one on. Okay. So, yeah, so this has rubber. You feel that? Yes, it's very soft. It's very soft, but on the inside of it, See this little thing right here? That's a piece of steel, so it's very strong. So what I did when I put this old one on is I put the pan on, I forgot to put those rails on. The rails actually help distribute the uh, clamp force across this evenly, and you have a nice uniform oil pan. So when I first did it, I had this uh, the rails off, and I put this on, and it was leaking, and I didn't quite like the bolts that I was using too. And also, one thing, my old timing cover, the screws were kind of stripped out of the bottom of this. And trying to um, do it the, the alley mechanic way, I kind of made some threads, just using some um, shreds or pieces of uh, copper wire. If you're in a tough pinch, sometimes that works, sometimes it did. So I wasn't able to put the proper amount of torque on those things. I've got the new timer cover now, so we'll um, be able to put that on. I think I should get a great seal. And also, you know, I've always been a ultra copper kind of guy, but this is some kind of new stuff from Permatech called Max Flex. Yeah, Max Flex. So this is supposed to be more flexible when you're... Uh, putting the ceiling surfaces together, and it's supposed to give more hold than the, the old stuff. So a couple of new things. So let's, um, Bryce, I'm going to head under the car and try to take this oil pan off. You don't have one of clothes to do it, but you can watch, OK? All right, let's get busy. Say what? Let's get busy, guys. All right. All right, so <clears throat> we have to get the motor support it so I can drop the pan. I have all the bolts loose on the pan. I was thinking that I was able to um, squeeze that pan out somehow, but there's not enough room. The K members got to get dropped. So that's why I started taking a lot of that stuff off. Now this is just a support bar. All right, so we have some janky instructions. Let's see what 
we got in here? I'm guessing this is the same thing on the other side. Okay, so let's move these back. Set this up here. That's about how I want to have it. About right here. Uh, yeah, cool little thing. Hopefully it, it works out. Alright, so here's the funny thing. I can't use this chain even if I wanted to. The bolt is too big to fit through there. So we're going to have to call this a wrap for right now. I need to go um, get some bigger, uh, bigger chains and I'll probably get some more hardware. All right, I have the engine brace taken care of. I got my chains. I'm reusing the old bolts that I had for the bracket, but I'm probably gonna go and get some new ones. And it's pretty nice how this works. You just tighten this up to take the slack out of it. And I probably would be able to lift this engine um, using this, but I have to remove a couple of things underneath the motor mounts and the steering shaft. So let's go under there and work on that. All right, now I have a crow's foot here and I'm hoping I will be able to get this off with this. All right, well, let me do this. Let's I was hoping I didn't have to remove this steering whack, but I'm going to have to remove the steering rack. I'm going to have to not all the way. Let me just loosen these up, pry this forward a little bit. But the problem I'm having is it's hitting these um, power steering lines. So let's get these power steering lines out the way and then I'll be able to get a socket on it and that'll make my life a lot easier. All right, so I have the bolts loosened up on the power steering rack. So let me try to push this back some. I have this out enough to get a socket in here. Let me get a a better socket. So this has swivel there, swivel here. Let's see if we can get this in here. There we go. Now I think we're aligned. Ah. 
Now I hope I have enough room which I do not. So let's um we can do two things. We can either keep trying to go up higher on this or we can drop the um, steering shaft. I want to drop the steering shaft, so let's get the steering shaft out of the way. There we go. All right, so got the rack off. Hopefully, um, what is this that's caught on it now? My turbo actually caught on it. I still don't think this is up high enough. Yeah, it's not it's not down far enough. I don't know the K members in the way. That's the issue. We're going to lower the K member. All right, the K member support it. I'm gonna work on removing these two bolts. So I forgot about these two right there. Man, y'all talk about a battle. It's probably um, more work than what I need to do. Actually, no, probably not. I know um, last time I had to drop the pan, I used the engine hoist. So this is the nice welded bong that Keith did. Um, beautiful, very happy with it. Even painted it for me. And yeah, I should really have no issues. So this is the 16 weld bong that I have on here. And I know maybe some of you are asking, why are you going with a 16? Well, I'm going with a 16 because I'm just trying to put the biggest drain on here that I can do. Now, you can see this mound of goop around the front of this pan and that's for a couple of reasons so it's time to cover over here it's time to cover i had a couple of problems with it so the first thing was you can see the crank snout the gasket Kind of got ripped and that was definitely user error on my part i did not um use the dial pins on here and here and so the crank cover i mean the timer cover was just kind of cocked it just wasn't aligned so that was the issue with this uh front seal getting chewed up and that was the issue also how i was getting this puddle of coolant right here you can see where i tried to just use some goop right there to try to stop it but 
it was just an issue with the the time of cover not sitting straight and i was having another leak from this time of cover and so i was trying to put a mound of goop up along here problem with that was these threads on this time of cover were stripped out and so i wasn't getting a good seating surface so i really kind of underestimated this job i was <laughs> thinking it's going to go a lot smoother but i have some things that i kind of kick myself with like um i have some power lines these are signal lines that's looping under the k member and so that's preventing this k member from dropping all the way that made it a lot harder than normal and on the other side this side i took off caliper the um strut everything i didn't do that on the other side so uh, when i want to put this back on i'm gonna definitely have to put that stuff back i mean take that stuff off just to make the lifting part of the k-member to go back easier and you know i'm gonna have to realign it so uh, we're not gonna do that this video and i don't think i'm gonna do a video with me reinstalling this but um yeah, that K member or that engine brace came in handy. Um, I have to say, I get a little nervous um, right now, lifting or cranking on those two handles to give more clearance for the oil pan. But I'm gonna give it a couple more um, turns just to try to make it a little bit easier getting this oil pan back on. I gotta go up underneath the car and clean off any kind of um, silicone residue and you know when you do these you put silicone on the four corners of the pan as on the, um, the block or the pan either way I'm going to put it on the block and um, that's all the prep work that I would do before putting this oil pan back on so I'm I'm kind of like um, babbling right now but hey if y'all have an easier way to do this leave a comment down below like I say, last time I did this, I um, had my engine hoist over and I really don't remember, but I know I just didn't have these wires looped under the, the K member. I know I did drop the K member, but yeah, these wires are um, just kind of in the way and I'm really not trying to uh, trace those back. But if I have to do it to get the new pan back on, then I'll do go ahead and do that. So, hey, I appreciate y'all rocking with me on, on this video. Uh, do me a solid, tell a couple of people about the channel. Until next time, God bless.